turn with me to the book of Amos chapter 5. Amos, the fifth chapter, we're going to start with verse 4. We're going to do a quick uh, highlight, the bunny hop version. It's to save on the sake of time to hit the meat and potatoes of the Word of God that we're talking about. So have patience with me as we go through that. Hallelujah. The Word of God that has, uh, has come forth by the Holy Spirit prepared this meal, this spiritual meal for us today, both here at Heart of Worship Church and those watching by live stream or YouTube, God has titled this message, The Spirit of Cain. The Spirit of Cain. Pray with me and for me. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you that it is only your spirit that can teach or preach, that only by the anointing God I can portray the word of the living God, that no philosopher or intellect can do justice to the word of God that you can by your power, by your grace and by your spirit. So tonight, this morning, Lord, I submit myself as a vessel. God, that you would cleanse my tongue, my mind, of my thoughts, of anything that is of the flesh or intellect, God, for your ways are not my ways, my ways are not your ways. But God, as your thoughts are higher than my thoughts, I submit to your thoughts. And I submit, God, to your ways. I submit, God, to your will. And by that, I pray that you would anoint my lips to speak, teach, and preach your word. I, I ask also, God, that you would anoint our ears together to hear from the spirit of the living God. Because you alone are the teacher. You alone are the preacher. You alone are the prophet. You alone are the apostle, God. So that you live in us, you live through us, God. I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that preach, but that you preach through me in Jesus mighty name and all of God's children shout amen, amen. so in Amos the uh, minor prophet is speaking to the northern kingdom of Israel Jeroboam king at this time but as I would like to quickly summarize the spirit of Cain if you know any biblical history as far as the account of Cain and his brother Abel both sons of Adam and Eve only the second generation recorded in creation. It can easily be summarized as what you would call the spirit of jealousy. The spirit of jealousy. The name Cain, get this, is literally translates to the word possessions. The name Cain by word in the Hebrew translate to the word possessions. Abel, I thought of that moment when I said, oh, Lord Jesus, I see where you're going. Let me look up Abel now. The Holy Spirit said, look up Cain. I said, I know where this is going. Let me try Abel. Y'all ready for this? Abel's name literally translates to the word breath. Ruach. The breath of the living God. You see two specific differential personalities and character traits in the story of Cain and Abel. To that we will look at. But as an opener, I want us to look at Amos 5 that really highlights the spirit of Cain. It is the spirit of Cain in this moment of time that has operated into the hearts of the Israelites, especially Jeroboam II, who was king at this time. He was wealthy. He was rich. He was also very selfish. And so selfish to the point that he allowed the poor to be sold into slavery. Get this, he wasn't satisfied with the riches that he had hoarded himself. But he allowed the poorest of the poor to be sold into slavery so he can consume the fatness of the wealth even further. The spirit of Cain that possessed him. I've heard it said this, we have possessions, but we dare not allow our possessions to possess us. And that is very true. Amen? Amen? Technology is good, but the Lord knows as much as I can dip to that interest, the, lo the Lord knows that he's got to hold me back to not be so consumed with the technology. That's just me. Maybe it's fishing. Maybe it's football sports fans. Whatever your bend is, we dare not let the spirit of mammon of Cain or possessions possess us. Amen? The only spirit that should possess us is the Holy Spirit. So, in an unsaid irony, Jeroboam II, when you look at where Israel had came from, not once, but twice, 
sold into slavery themselves. So selfish, so greedy he was that he sold his poorest of people into slavery for money. The irony is that Jeroboam's descendants came from Egypt, Egyptian bondage. The irony is that Jeroboam's descendants also came out of Babylon captivity. And to fast forward to a quick highlight, only 40 years later, the irony will consume him that he himself and his descendants will be also taken into Assyrian captivity 40 years after this prophecy. Amos chapter 5, verse 4, everybody have a say amen. This is the opener. Thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek me, and ye shall live. Thus saith the Lord God to the United States of America, to China, to Italy, Seek God, and you shall live. Amen. The word of God is sure. The word of God is solid, and I believe it. You shall live. Seek ye the Lord, verse 6, and ye shall live, lest he break out a fire in the house of Joseph and devour it, and there shall be none quenched in Bethel. Now I want to stop right there. What we are reading is Amos having a burning turn in his bowels by the Holy Spirit to speak the word of prophecy out of the southern kingdom of Judah into the northern kingdom of Israel and say, you've got a spirit of Cain. You've got a spirit of selfishness. This is what is happening. You need to repent or you shall die or seek the Lord and you shall live is what he said. Amen. Now, what really burned my heart is in the study I found that when he specifically talked about Bethel, Bethel, if you will, Bethel is the place where Jacob, Jacob's ladder was. That became the gateway of heaven. But Jeroboam, in his selfishness, became so consumed with the surrounding nations and the worship of their false idols and gods, he erected multiple idols within that same territory. And let me tell you, it wasn't one. As I said, multiple. We're talking about uh, Ishtar. We're talking about all kind of gods. That was the worship of weather, of, of sexual int intimacy, of all sorts of their money, of course. And what a blasphemy. So here comes Amos, little old Amos, with a burning sensation to call out a repentance. Seek ye the Lord, and you shall live. Come on, church, seek him. Verse 8, that maketh the seven stars of Orion and turneth the shadows of death into morning. He makes the day dark with night that calleth forth the waters of the seas and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. The Lord is his name. The very title of lordship of master is the name of our living God. What is his name? No, you know what? It's his title. He is God. He says, I am that I am. And they have forgotten their God. Verse 10. And this is the highlight. They hate him. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. And I think he's talking third person because I don't, I don't know if y'all figured it out, and I think I have too. Amos is giving a proper biblical Holy Spirit-led rebuke to the nation. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. To say plainly, the people were not happy with Amos' word. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. That's the key words. I want y'all to hold that. And they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. Now, verse 14. Seek good and not evil, that you might live. And so the Lord and the God of hosts shall be with you as ye have spoken. Listen to this. Hate evil. The world says we shouldn't hate, but I tell you what, it's a good thing to hate the bad things. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? The people that love God hate evil. God is love, but he also hates evil. And very clearly, hate evil, love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord, of God of hosts, will be gracious unto the raiment of Joseph, saying, God will have mercy. God might have mercy again. If you seek the Lord, ye shall live. Now, 16, therefore, the Lord, God of hosts, 
He saith thus, wailing shall be in all the streets. And I'm bold in that on my notes. My wife and I have been watching some videos on Facebook that has illustrated a heart cry of repentance in the city streets across all the world, especially Italy. And even China, Brazil has saying, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. There's nothing more powerful than thousands of people quarantined in their balconies on high-rise buildings in all the streets in unison singing in their own language. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Come on, church. And that was, a, I tell you what, that there's one thing that I'm excited about that what is happening now in this time, the glass half full is people are turning to Jesus. They're talking about death facing us. You know what? In the word of God, we just read, seek ye the Lord and ye shall live. You shall live, church. Seek God. But it says again to 16, wailing shall be in all the streets. And I'm seeing that now. I know you are too. They shall say in all the highways, alas, alas, they shall call the husband to mourning. And such as are skillful of lamentation now to wailing. Taking our prayer deeper into the, to a deep, taking it further, falling on our face and repenting before God. I, I saw a senator in, uh, I don't remember which, it was at the Lincoln Memorial, I think, that had an assembly, and one of the senators was in tears, uh, crying out with church leaders in Washington, and this, this was recorded on Facebook, and they were saying, he said, God, I repent on behalf of the United States of America. I repent on behalf of this nation. Church, we've gone so far. And look, I tell you what, at 36 years old, I'm old enough to know that from the 80s till now, it is much worse. And y'all older than me, my elders can say, yes, amen, I agree, because when I was born, it was even better. The morality of this nation has fallen apart. And the Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is their Lord. And let me tell you, we confess it. We might have it on our dollar bills, but I think truly the God we trust in is mammon. Unfortunately. Verse 16 sounds like what we are seeing now, the wailing in the streets. And again, verse 10 is the verse of emphasis. They hate him, hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. Let's turn to Genesis 4. Hold your finger there. We're going to come back to it. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. The spirit of Cain. We're talking about the spirit of Cain, so we're going to look at Cain. A couple of verses that pop off the page for me. It might pop off the page for you. I hope it does, because this is the word of the Lord. Everybody have a say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Chapter 4, Genesis, verse 1, it says, And Adam knew, his, knew Eve, his wife. And she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Abel was a shepherd. Cain was a tiller of the ground. And before I go any further, it's not sinful to be a gardener. Amen. Amen. Okay, so before we go further in the parallels, Cain bad, Abel good, we need to understand if you till the ground, you're not cursed. <laughs> Amen. Tilling ground is a good thing. And that was the job that they were commissioned to do. Verse 3, In the process of time came past that Cain brought forth the fruit of the ground as an offering unto the Lord and Abel. He also brought the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. God favored Abel's offering, but we know, according to verse 5, but unto Cain, and to his offering he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth or angry, and his countenance had fallen. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why are you wroth? Meaning, why are you angry? Why are you bitter? And why is thy countenance fallen? Listen to this, verse 7. If thou doest well, Brother Will, if you do well, Brother Wayne, if you do well, Shall not thou be accepted? If you do well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door. 
and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Now I want to stop there. There's a lot of debate between why Cain's offering was not accepted and why Abel's offering was accepted. I lean a little bit more to the fact that the blood was the only proper sacrifice in all of the Old Testament. From thenceforth, you never hear of anyone offering tomatoes and cucumbers to Jesus. It was always a bullock, a lamb, a goat, a dove, all of the physical, biological people. Now, whether that is the case or not, but God gave him an opportunity. There was an opportunity. Listen, there is not a person that is here or watching that has not fallen. The Bible tells us that all have fallen short of the glory of God. And therefore, I'll say this, all have the opportunity that Cain had where God told him, if you do well, won't you be accepted? And if you don't, listen, sin lieth at the door. In other words, don't go any further. Your countenance may fall. You might even get a little angry at that coworker. But watch yourself. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. Hear what I'm saying, church. Everybody has the opportunity to stop, count to 10, say, thank you, Jesus. What's my next step? Forgive me. I want to do right this time. I want you to be to favor, to favor my offering. Everybody has that opportunity. And verse 8, it says in Cain, obviously he didn't do well. He didn't take it the right step. He didn't humble himself before God, repent. And ask what the next step is. He says, Cain, it says, And Cain talked with his brother Abel, and it came to pass. They were in the field. Cain rose up against his brother Abel, and he slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is thy brother Abel? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which thou hast opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Cain got cursed because he continued in his bitterness. Listen to what I'm saying, church. I, I, this is what I saw. Cain realized that his offering was not favored. Step two, Cain he got wroth and angry. Then his countenance fell. At that moment, God says, wait, why are you angry? Why is your countenance fallen? You have the opportunity. Don't, isn't it true that if you do well, that you will be accepted? And it is also true if you don't, that sin lieth at the door. Stop what you're doing. Don't go any further. You're about to mess up. But Cain allowed his bitterness to stay. Tiller of the ground. He kept the seed in his heart. That bitterness seed stayed. And what happens when the seed stays in the ground, brother? It takes root. It germinates. It grows. And that's exactly what happened. He didn't repent of his bitterness and humble himself before God and change his ways. He allowed himself to stay angry and, of course, killed his brother and then became cursed. The generational curse of falling. Selfishness. It began with Adam and Eve. Some might say pride. And I know that the devil tempted saying, no, you won't die. Actually, Eve, if you do consume this fruit, you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. And I thought that to be true to the case, and it might be in an application, but what really highlights is when it says these words. For Eve, it says, when she saw that it was pleasing to the eye, when she saw it pleased the flesh, when we know we want that extra piece of pie and we can't handle it, guess what, church? I got to admit, gluttony is a sin. That pecan pie might be good, but if you're stuffed and you take that extra one, I had to repent of gluttony. It was selfish. It was selfish. And then the next generation came Cain, jealousy. He was very wroth and his countenance fell. He killed his brother. But the emphasizing verse is Cain had the opportunity to do well and be accepted, but he allowed jealousy to overcome him, preventing him from becoming who God desired him to be. Listen, Cain is a tiller. That's good. Abel is a shepherd. That's also good. 
God did not co condemn Cain for tilling the ground. God condemned Cain for keeping bitterness that led to the sin that was lying at the door and said, ha ha, sin's like, hey, I'm right here, Cain. Cain said, all right, open the door and let it right on in. And what happened? He killed his brother Abel. As I said before, and, and I think the word of the Lord is connecting these dots, I preached in December a message to stay humble and stay faithful. Cain, keep tilling the ground, keep planting the seeds, keep growing tomatoes. That's what God has called you to do. Abel, you, plant, you are being a shepherd. That's what God has called you to do. Be who God has called you to be, but don't let bitterness, bitterness consume you. In other words, like I said before in that message, and I'm going to say it again, church, Brother Jacob, you are Jacob. You are a teacher. You're not necessarily an evangelist degree or an apostle. Guess what? God has called you to teach these kids. God has called you to learn Hebrew. God has called you to do those things, and I can't be jealous of that. If God has called me to till the ground and Jacob to tend the sheep, I got to say thank you, Jesus, for tomatoes, because, God, I'm going to do it my best for you in the name of Jesus. My wife has, has been gifted by the Holy Spirit to read people's mail, and I use this as a great example. She interprets dreams better than I can because God has gifted her. And that is what I'm trying to tell you, church. Bitterness can settle into the church of God when they look at other people and say, I want to be Nathan Morse. And praise God if God has called you to it, but if God didn't call you to be Nathan Morse, you can't be Nathan Morse. Some of y'all don't, don't know what I'm talking about, but I think y'all do. In every circumstance, if you are a grown adult, there has come a time where you looked at someone and you got jealous. You thought of yourself, I wanted to be that person. I want to do that. And listen to what I'm saying. That's not necessarily wrong. But it got bitter. Every able in our lives, listen, every able in our lives gives opportunity to be either jealous or inspired. I want y'all to notice the difference. Sin lieth at the door. He had, Cain had the opportunity right at the fork in the road. Listen to what could have happened. He could have gotten inspired by Abel, but he chose to be jealous. Cain could have been encouraged by Abel's devotion, but Cain chose to be bitter. Cain could have gotten motivated to do as unto Abel, but Cain, instead of being motivated from this fork in the road, he chose to be angry. Do y'all see the difference? Come on, church, do y'all see the difference? Yeah. Hear me. Jealous or inspired, bitter or encouraged, angry or motivated. There's your fork in the road. The same instance, choose the latter. In Amos, Israel was worshiping other gods while offering sacrifices to God Jehovah. Listen, they were playing the harlot. They were sacrificing to Ishtar, but at the same time, they were sacrificing to Jehovah. They prioritized their possessions over the Spirit of God. So when the real was revealed through Amos the prophet, the fakery of the people caused the spirit of Cain to rise up in them, which, like Cain, caused them to be cast away, specifically to the Assyrians. It was from this, this rebellious heart of Israel that the Assyrians, 40 years later, had ravaged the country and taken the nation captive yet once again. In Amos chapter 5, you held your finger well in verse 21. I'm almost to a close, I promise. The word of the Lord, Amos 5, this is continuing. Notice the first half of Amos that we read in chapter 5 was a message of hope, a message of repentance, a message that was a heart cry that said, Come on, Israel, lay down your possessions, lay down the idolatry, seek ye the Lord, and you shall live. But this is the word of the rebuke. This is the latter half like Cain where he was cursed. And this is the truth. One of the hardest messages I believe the church has to hear is Amos chapter 5, verse 21. Because there's many people, whether they're Facebook Live, YouTube Live, or live like we're doing, all across this nation and the world, Churches are participating in feasts, in worship services, in messages. But listen to what the word of the Lord said. I hate, I despise your feast days. This is not Amos, though it is his voice. It is the word of the Lord. He says, I hate, I despise your feast days. I will not smell, which is, I looked it up under the word smell. That was the Hebrew word ruach, which is a related word to Abel, the favor of God. 
Man, y'all need to catch that. He says, I will not smell, smell in your solemn assemblies, the breath of God. In other words, I will not partic- the spirit of the Lord said, I won't participate in your church services because they were playing the harlot. They allowed possessions and the spirit of Cain to consume them. Though you offer me burnt offerings, though you offer me meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard them, regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Though you listen to Hillsong, though you invite Elevation Worship to come to your church, though you do all those things, I am not participating in it. The hardened truth is that God hates fakes. God hates the fakery. He does not participate in it. Take thou away, verse 23, from me the noise of thy songs. For I will not hear the melody of thy vials. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Have you offered me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness for 40 years, O house of Israel? But you have borne the tabernacle of Moloch and Chun, your images, the star of your God, which made unto yourselves. Those are all false idols. Therefore, I will cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus. Look at this, saith the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. And that is a hardened judgment because the people chose their gods over the God. And I'm not condemning church, y'all know that. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm telling you that the severity of the spirit of Cain. I know personally many times that I have hit that fork in the road and I'm not going to list them all out. But there's been many opportunities as a country church pastor that I can feel jealous of other people's giftings, other people's callings. Listen to what I'm saying. God has only made you, and there is none other like you. God has called and gifted you, and there is no one with your calling and gifting. So what God has desired for your life may not line up with what we choose, but if we choose not to be bitter, but only inspired. I use Nathan Morris as an example to help you understand. I'm not jealous of him. My wife, as an example, I'm not jealous of my wife. I am who I am in Christ Jesus. He's gifted me in worship and teaching and preaching, not prophecy or dreams. But in our church that understands the giftings, it's too easy for the spirit of the devil to come in with a little bit of, yeah, well, she makes herself look good. Everybody goes to her. Everybody goes to him. He makes himself look good. Y'all see what I'm talking about? I don't want a spirit of Cain in this church. I want to walk in right now and before you now do this. Because I'm proud of Brother Will and his calling. I'm proud of Brother Wayne and his calling. I'm proud of Sister Liz and her calling. I'm proud of Brother, Brother Marty, your gifting on your calling. You see what I'm saying? The spirit of Cain is a very devastating thing. It caused an entire nation to be taken yet again into slavery because of their rebellion. Let God be God in you and not anyone else. I may not know Hebrew like Jacob, that's okay. You see, we need to understand bitterness is a bad thing. I want us as the body of Christ, like for example, Miranda, no doubt, very mature in the spirit. I want people to look at Miranda and be inspired, not jealous of her. I want, same for Brother Wayne. When people look at Brother Wayne, give a word. I want y'all to be inspired by him and motivated, not jealous and envy or bitter. As an example, same for Brother Will, Marty. All of us here, whomever you might turn your head and be like, Right there, motivation, inspiration, not bitterness and jealousy, amen? It is a word for our church, but it is also a word for the church, all of us. Because let me, let me remind you, church, we are all growing in grace. Amen. Babies in the, in, the, in the faith, be inspired by the adults, not jealous. Adults in the faith, be patient with the babies. Can I get an amen? amen. Ain't that the truth? Let us examine our hearts and see if we have allowed jealousy or bitterness to take root in our hearts. We can choose today to allow them to become our stepping stones. Listen to this. God gave this to me. 
today we can choose those temptations of bitterness to then be converted to stepping stones to inspiration and not a roadblock to resentment to what God has in store for us as individuals. Let their lives as the potential bitterness be the stepping stone to inspiration, not the roadblock to resentment. Jacob going up. We're going to uh, close this in a word of repentance as an altar call. If you need it to be prayed over, we can lay hands over you, call for the elders of the church, just as the scripture says. But I really want us to reflect in this time. Examine our hearts to see whether we be in the faith. Lord, if there is any seeds, as Cain being a tiller of the ground, who planted seeds, Lord, let there not be any seed of bitterness in our heart. Let us not be angry and unforgiving and offense, offended to other people, especially within the body. I hear the echo, the sound.